want you to stand on your feet. You're not allowed to sit down yet. You should know this by now. We're family. I'm going to have you all stand right back up because we're going to honor the Word of God in a moment. But it's great to be back with you amongst family again. And uh, I'm thankful to your pastors for the opportunity and the entrustment that this represents. And I am not a visiting speaker. I might not be based here, but I am a builder. And if a builder comes in to help build, you don't treat them as a visitor, you listen to them as a builder. And that changes the way you hear the teaching. Today, I wanna put tools in your hand to help you build your families and your marriages and your businesses and your future and your destiny. And I want you to lean into everything that God has for you. And I did not know the series that you were in until your pastor called me and said, hey, just by chance, do you have anything that would fit well in our series about stress? I was like, I don't really know. And then I began to think and pray and God just put this message on my heart that I think fits so perfectly with what it is that God is wanting to say to you today. And I wanna say right before I begin that today I believe God wants to do surgery. And I'm saying that right at the beginning because I need you to prepare your heart to be willing to let God do what God can only do. That many of you have walked in here with things that God does not want you to walk out with. Many of you come in here with a problem that you don't even perceive is the problem. And God today wants to heal what you didn't even know needed healing. Some of you are trying to fix things in a way that is in your humanness, but God has a way to fix things that are very different than how we fix things. And so today I really believe that the worship was anesthetic and the Word is gonna be surgery. And at the end, I'm gonna provide an opportunity for you to actually respond. And so I'm telling you that now so that you're not shocked at the end, but you're ready at the end. And I kinda wanna say to some of you today, enough is enough. Needs to draw a line today. You need to walk away from some things today. Enough is enough. There's too much of your past in your future. Enough is enough. And so God's gonna help you get free today. So God, we honor your word. We're just so thankful because So many times in life, everyone else's words fail us. They promise, but they don't fulfill. They present themselves one way, but then they act another way. And God, I pray today you would restore us. Restore our love for your word. We would place your word above any word that's been spoken to us or about us. And God, I pray today that there will be a healing that takes place that is so supernatural that everything changes though nothing may change. And I pray for open hearts, open hands, so that you can have your way today, Holy Spirit. I pray I would get out of the way, God, and give you all the glory today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may take your seats. So the surgery I think God wants to do today, I know God wants to do today for you all, is God wants you today to have eye surgery. Today, I believe that God wants to help you in the way that right now you are seeing your life, the right way that you, the the way that you are looking at your life, because if you don't see straight, you won't speak straight. And if you don't see straight, you won't choose straight. And if you don't see straight, you won't act straight. And so there's something about your vision today that I believe the Holy Spirit wants to fix before you make any more decisions about your future or the things that are ahead of you. You need to see how God sees, so you choose how God would choose. And if I was to put a title over the message today, I wanna speak to you about some of you have been what I'm calling blindsided. 
Blindsided is the expression we use when something happens to us that we did not see coming. When something unexpected happens and it kind of collides with our life and as a result, our life does not look the same anymore. And you know, the enemy loves to blindside us. With the medical report we didn't anticipate coming, with the job redundancy that we didn't see happening, with the situation of betrayal that we weren't even aware was in our future, all of these circumstances and more, they blindside us, they knock something out of us of trust and confidence. They put us on the back foot instead of the forefoot. And all of us go through those scenarios at any given space and time in our journey in life. And some of you, You've been blindsided recently and for others of you, you were blindsided years ago and it is still affecting the way you think, the way you act and the way you speak. Because the enemy has a subplot within every time you are blindsided. And the subplot is this, that he wants it to leave you blindsided. Now that may seem a strange expression that I have given you because how can you be blind and sighted at the same time? But that's exactly what happens after an incident that offends you or hurts you or betrays you or wounds you in some way. It ends up that you are still, as it were, able to see with your natural eyes, but something on the inside of you lost sight, lost vision for your future, your hopes suddenly became less, your faith suddenly became lowered. And now though you are seeing, you are not seeing in the way that God wants you to see. And so you are blind, but you are sighted all at the same time. And today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is time to get healed what is long overdue in being healed so you can see again. So you can be free again. There is hope today. There is faith today. There is fresh vision today for your life, but you're going to have to have surgery in order to get it. But the hands of the great physician are safe hands for you to trust. I did a little study about the loss of vision in the natural for I have found that God often does something in the natural to teach us something in the spiritual. And so I began to Google damaged eyes, things that had happened to people's eyes because of an impact that had happened. I don't recommend that you Google retinal damage. All kinds of not nice images will come up for you to see. But as I was looking at all of these retinal damage, these eyeballs that were damaged, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And one of the fascinating things that I found was when somebody had been impacted in their, in their vision area, in their eyesight, when something happens to an eye that is some kind of damage that happens to it, in the natural, there's something that can happen called a retinal tear. And a retinal tear means there's a small tear that happens that is that is is something you would not even know that you had necessarily and the tear through the impact remains there and it begins to affect your vision so it becomes a little blurry but if it is left unattended the retinal tear can be a place that begins to gather tears that actually tears that should go out of your face actually can end up storing in the place where this tear has happened. And if that happens, the more they gather, the more pressure goes against the eye and the more the retina begins to detach. And when the retina begins to detach, eventually you could end up blind. And I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, as as it is in the natural, there are so many in the spiritual who've had an impact happen to them and it has torn their spiritual retina. They've had their vision affected and the private tears that you are crying and the private grief that you are feeling and the hidden loss that you are enduring all begins to gather emotionally inside of you. And if you don't get the tear fixed, you eventually will become blind. There will be a detachment of the retina of your life for the vision that God has for your life. So this is serious. This is, not, this is not something that we should ignore or avoid because God wants to heal you where the enemy wants to blind you. And so I wanna help you see 
straight. Have you ever been to a 3D movie when they first came out? Yes, I am that old. My kids uh, uh, wanted to go to a 3D movie and we went to a 3D movie and I had no idea why we needed to go watch a film by wearing glasses. I was like, I don't get it, but okay. And I remember they handed out these plastic glasses and I put a pair of the glasses on and I just spent the first few minutes complaining that they were making the film worse, not better, as I was watching the commercial before the movie began. And I was like, I can't see anything and it's blurry. And my kid's like, mom, these are for the movie. They're not for the commercials. I couldn't see my popcorn. I couldn't see my Coke. I was like, I was, I was complaining about it because I didn't understand how to use them. And the truth is spiritually, oftentimes we're complaining because we don't know how to put the 3D glasses on that God has actually given for our life. So we see everything in 1D. We see everything through how I feel, my emotions, my bank balance, what matters to me, who, who hurt me. We see things through 1D and that's why you are stressed because 1D living is stressful living. It's all the time looking at what's coming at you instead of what is within you. And in 2 Kings 6, there was a story of someone with 1D vision who needed help with 3D vision. And so in 2 Kings 6, we find this story story happens where the younger prophet, remember the story, if you've been around church any length of time, but the younger prophet in 2 Kings 6 verse 15 walks out of the tent that morning with his cup of coffee, comes out of the tent and it says he got up, went out early and then he saw there was an army and horses of chariots of the enemy surrounding them and he said these words, oh my Lord, oh no, what shall we do? That's exactly what 1D living sounds like. You look out, as it were, the tent curtains of your life and you're like, oh my word, oh no, what am I gonna do? I didn't see this coming. I'm surrounded by the enemy. The circumstances are bad and this servant is freaking out like some of you are freaking out right now. Oh no, my kid has walked away from God. Oh no, my, my debts are increasing. Oh no, my job is looking not secure. Oh no, my marriage is in trouble. All of the things that you are feeling are in this statement of panic from 1D seeing. And then the older, wiser prophet comes alongside this young man and prays a prayer that seems to make no sense. He first tells this young man, don't be afraid. And that's what you need to hear today. Some of you don't be afraid because fear will mean the vision gets worse, not better. Don't be afraid. 1D vision means that you live in fear, not in faith. And then he prays a prayer that, that makes no sense. He says, Lord, open his eyes. Well, his eyes are open. It's because his eyes are open that he sees the enemy on the hill. And so the prayer is letting us know there are more than one set of eyes that have to be open. There is a 3D perspective here that God has available for us all. And so the young man is standing looking at the same hill where he was panicking, but now his eyes are open and he sees a whole lot of army of angelic hosts surrounding him. And here's the thing. Listen to me, and I don't have time to preach it because this is the introduction, but here's the thing for free. I'll throw this in. When you see with 1D, you solve the problem in 1D. So when an enemy's on a hill and you see in 1D, what do you do? You go, I don't know how to fight. Where are my weapons? What am I gonna do? Let me rally who I can. We'll just have to fight. But now he can see with 3D, he comes up with a solution to the situation, which is walking the enemy into the camp and feeding them a banquet, which no one with 1D vision would ever suggest you doing. But when you see how God sees you have solutions, you can't even comprehend. Open his eyes. 
Some of you, that's why you need surgery because you are so 1D right now and God has a whole nother perspective of the same situation. And so I wanna take you to the text that I'm gonna speak to you from for the next few moments where God actually helps someone see like He wants to help you see today. And this is a passage in Scripture where if you were to read it, you could say to yourself, man, was Jesus having a bad day on this day? Because it's almost like this story is about Jesus failing. Because this story is about Jesus doing a miracle that we know He has done multiple times before. And yet when He does the miracle on this day, the miracle does not work the first time. So He has to pray a second time for the same miracle to take place. So you could almost read it like, Jesus, did you not have enough coffee this morning? I mean, you know how to open blind eyes. Like before, Jesus could just say, blind eye open, and it would open. He could touch someone and they would be able to go from not seen to seen. But on this occasion, that's not how this plays out. And I want you to see the steps in the process of healing because I believe the same steps are necessary in your healing today. And by the way, this story that I'm about to read to you, many people avoid because they don't really understand it. And many of you are reading your Bible in 1D and you're looking for it to jump off the page and slap you around the head and be like, here's the truth. But you need to understand you have to read your Bible in 3D. You have to stay there and linger there and ponder there and ask questions about the things that you're reading so God can open your eyes so you can see it more clearly. I'm tired of 1D teaching how I feel and what I'm going through and what, what's my situation. I want, I want 3D. I want what God sees and what God says and what God reveals. And so here we find in Mark 8, this story play out. It says in verse 22, they came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and he led him outside the village. Let me stop right there. This already is unusual. Here's people saying, this guy's blind. He has a sight problem. Jesus fix it. And instead of Jesus fixing it and stepping in and simply healing it, Jesus does something really unusual. And it says he takes the man's hand and he begins to walk him away from the people that have brought him for a miracle. He begins to take him outside of the village. Now, that might not sound a big deal to you or to I because we can see. But when everything about your world is, is, is blind, when you cannot see for yourself, someone that is a stranger to you taking your hand and removing you from everything that is comfortable to you is a big deal. These people, this village, they were his eyes. They defined for him what every day looked like. They told him what people's children looked like. They told him what people's facial expressions were in a conversation. They filled in all the blanks for him that he could not see. And you know, when one of your senses does not work, your other senses heighten to compensate. And so his hearing was super intentional and super high. So he listened to everything they said for it filled in all the blanks for him. And so this company of people, this community of people, they were his vision. And so now they're shouting that he needs a healing and Jesus' response is not to respond, but to begin to take him away from the very people that asked for him to see. Why is that? Well, the place where he was was called Bethsaida. And just a few scriptures earlier, you'll find the verses, whoa, whoa. To you, Bethsaida. For if half of the miracles had been done somewhere else that you have witnessed, by now they would have repented and changed their ways. And so Bethsaida was a place that wanted entertainment, but not transformation. Bethsaida was a place who liked the show, but were not ready to surrender and give up their own ways and control. Bethsaida were a place that actually were condemned for their unbelief. And so Jesus is saying, before I help you see, I have to take you away from the negative narrative that is stopping you from being able to see. I need to remove you from 
from the village that is actually keeping you blind. Right. <laughs> Some of you are asking God to help you see, but you refuse to unfollow on Instagram what's making you blind. Some of you are asking God to help you see, but you refuse to leave the negative narrative of the company that you are in. And Jesus says, listen, you want a miracle? It's not on your terms, it's on my terms. <laughs> you wanna see? Then you're gonna have to stop having that conversation. You wanna see? Then you're gonna have to unfollow on Facebook. You wanna see? You're gonna have to stop hanging around the pity party. You wanna see? You're gonna have to stop talking about the offence. For I am not gonna bring the miracle to a place of negativity and unbelief. But I will give you my hand and ask you to leave the village. And some of you need to know the first step of you seeing today is you gotta leave the village, whatever the village has become. You can have a whole village up here in your head going on. You can have a whole village of wrong counsel going on. You can have a whole village of negativity going on. And you're saying, oh God, heal my marriage, but you're living in the village of negativity. Oh God, heal my faith, but you're living in a negative and doubtful community. You are asking God to enlarge your future, but you're living in the smallness of your past and your hurts. So Jesus doesn't even explain Himself. He asks the one that cannot see to put His hand in the one that can help Him see and leave the village that of all this time told Him what to see. begins to leave the village, begins to follow Jesus away from the sound that is so familiar to a place that is unfamiliar. He begins to leave the narrative that he has so listened to every day and now he's in a place of space and trusting in a way that is different. You know, when we went through a season, my husband and I, not long ago, there was just so, it felt like all the voices were negative around us. And it felt like there was a season that had blindsided us in some ways. And I remember my husband being given the verse by God in Psalm 46, verse 10 in the message. And it simply says this, it says, step out of the traffic. Get out of the traffic and look up. And look at me, get out of the traffic. And some of you need to get out of the traffic. Get out of the noise. Leave the village of smallness. Leave the village of unforgiveness. And take His hand. Jesus leads him outside of the village. And then it says this next line, which I have not got time to preach on, but you need to see that it's in your Bible so that you don't get offended if Jesus does this to you. It says, and then he spit on the man. I don't get it. I don't know why, like Jesus really. I don't know that that was the best way after he's just taken your hand to build a bond of trust. You just spit on him. It's like you coming forward this morning feeling like I'm just gonna go forward and get prayer because I need help. And then the person at front just on you. You'd be like, I am never coming back here ever again. But maybe he was so used to things being done his way that Jesus is like, this will be done my way. And if you are offended at some of the things that God is challenging in you, then you will live blind instead of living with sight. You have to choose. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll trust you, God, in this area once you deal with them. Well, what if he doesn't? You're just gonna be stuck forever? because you don't get to be God, He is God. He chooses how this thing plays out. And so you have to trust that about Him. And so maybe it feels like this is a spitting on me, God, but if it's God that's spitting, you're in good hands. <laughs> I'd rather have God spit on me than people spit on me. And by the way, He had people spit on Him. And He took it so that you could be free. Because when they spat on him, he saw your face and he saw mine. And so he spit on the man's eyes and he put his hands on him. And then Jesus asked him this question. Do you see anything? 
Like, tell me what you see. And here's the second part of your healing. You have to leave the village, but secondly, you have to answer honestly. Do you know how many times I talk to pastors and leaders and I'm like, so, you know, how's it going? Like, oh, it's amazing. And the Holy Spirit's all over it. And we just see miracles and there's breakthroughs everywhere. I'm like, liar, liar, pants on fire. You are miserable. Your team is miserable. No one got saved for three months. Everybody's falling out with each other. Why are you telling me what is not true? Jesus is not afraid of the truth. He already knows the truth and it's the truth that sets you free. So He's not looking for your impressive answer. He's looking for your honest answer. Like, what do you see? The guy's like, um, well... I, uh, I, I see people, I think, but they actually look like trees and the trees are walking around. Well, that is a whole hot mess of a statement. <laughs> you know what we do in the church? First of all, we don't show up for our eye test. We just keep doing the same thing over and over again. We don't ever think to check in and say, God, am I seeing this right? Am I seeing what you want me to see? So first of all, we don't show up. And so our eyesight gets worse, but we pretend that we can see clearly. Because we don't want to admit that we've ever got a blur in our vision. But in the natural, you need to go and see someone when your vision's not good. And so, you know, the older you get, you realize you need to go see someone about your eyes. They're not quite as good. Like I said the other day, what happened? Who shrunk the words in my Bible? The kids are like, no one, mom, you're just getting old. <laughs> if you go to the opticians and you go for an eye exam, you sit in the chair, right? And you're like, you start off really confident. Well, I do. A, V, S, W, T, Y, P. And it gets a little further down. Let's get a little smaller. Oh. Q, <clears throat> S, because you're not really sure whether what you're seeing is what that's saying. And you really hope that he takes a break and leaves the room so you can run up to the chart, memorize the last two lines, sit back in the seat and be all good with your answers. That's what we do in the church. Come here, my friend. It's like me answering a question like, how you doing? And me going, what's your name? Dallas. Dallas. What a name. You're living in the wrong place. I know it's a mistake. <laughs> that's, that's all messed up right there. But anyway, we'll work on, we'll, we'll work on that later. It's like me, you said, how are you doing? How's your marriage you doing? And I'm just like, I'm just going to borrow that podcast. I'm just going to borrow that person's message from somebody. I'm just going to borrow what I think I should say. And you're like, yeah, I'm all good. I'm totally good. Everything's great in my life. All good. And I'm now trying to answer you through someone else's prescription. These were not made to correct my vision. They were made to correct his vision because his sight is deficient in a different way than my sight is deficient. But in the church, we all borrow each other's information thinking that that means we're gonna see our future through your lenses. Listen, you don't have T.D. Jakes prescription, so why are you answering as if you're T.D. Jakes? Thank you. God's like, sit in the chair and answer me honestly. Well, God, I'm disappointed. Well, God, I thought you'd protect me from this. You know what? This season sucks. You know what? I don't enjoy my marriage. You know what? My kids are not angelic anymore. I don't know what your honest answer is. But if you want your vision fixing, you have to answer honestly so He can write you a prescription according to your deficiency. Jesus is not failing at healing. Jesus is taking him through the steps so that when he has finished in his healing, he doesn't just have his natural eyes open, but he has his spiritual eyes open. This is a two-step healing because Jesus wants to fix what he sees internally so that actually it will change everything external.
externally. And some of you are trying to get a, a sight for your future, a vision plan. You're trying to write a vision plan for your future. You're trying to plan your future. And it's not feeling like it's taking ground. And I'm telling you why. Because you're trying to fix something with 1D. You're trying to fix something because of stress and pressure. But you have to get these eyes fixed first. And then these eyes will catch up. And we don't like that process because we want to have an answer. Well, sometimes it takes a while between the eye examination and the prescription. And so Jesus asks him the question. He answers honestly. And then it says this, it says, Then Jesus once more put his hands on the man's eye. He went twice with this healing. The second touch was to align the spiritual opening with the natural eyes opening. And then his eyes were opened and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. And can I tell you, that is my prayer for you today. That though nothing may change when you leave this room in the natural, everything will change inside of you. And it's like in the morning, you're going to wake up and open, as it were, the curtains of your life with your cup of coffee. And what was freaking you out before is not going to freak you out anymore because you had an eyesight surgery. That means now you see everything clearly. And there's a solution that you weren't even considering because it couldn't come until you were actually seeing things correctly. You saw everything clearly. For some of you, it's so long since you saw clearly. You've not been able to see past the offence. You've not been able to see past the bitterness. You've not been able to see a future that is free because you're so bound up in the pain of the past. You've forgotten what it is to see clearly something that brings you joy because the sorrow has overwhelmed the retinal tear and the retinal tears have caused such de detachment even from the people around you that love you the most. All of a sudden, he sees clearly and then Jesus just has one more step. For though his sight is restored, though he's seeing clearly, you would think the miracle is done, but Jesus, as he's leaving, shouts out after him. He says, hey, go home, but don't you dare go back through the village. Go home, but don't you go back through the village. Don't you take your new vision and go back into the same conversation. Don't you take your new vision and go back to the same village of negative narrative. I have healed you, but just as quick as I healed you, you can go back and find your blind again. And you're gonna leave this service and go home. Back to the job, back to the same house, back to the same family, back to the same people, back to the same problem. But I guarantee if you let God do surgery, you'll go back seeing differently, but don't you dare go back via the village. Some of you need to say to each other as husband and wife, we're not talking about that anymore. Some of you need to say to your kids, I'm not, I'm not getting in that conversation anymore. Some of you need to block and delete and not unblock anymore. because He wants you to go home and be able to see a future. But don't go via the village. And so here's what I want to do. I want us to let God do what only God can do. The great surgeon who will never harm you. Who when He cuts anything from you, it's only so something new can grow within you. These are safe hands. And some of you have not been in safe hands for a long time, but His are safe hands. I want us all to stand to our feet. And if you're watching online at home, I want you to change your posture too. The Holy Spirit in the room is the same as the Holy Spirit in that room. There's no separation, no matter where you watch this, no matter where you are. And 
all night last night and all today, this morning, I've been asking God that He would, in this moment, do something in you. Some of you desperately need this moment. And so I just ask you to close your eyes. You know what it is that's specific to you. You know where you've been blindsided. You know the collision that you feel took you out, knocked your confidence, stole your dream. The relationship that you feel just tore something in the inside of you that is still an open wound. And just as your eyes are closed and you just are like, God, that's what blindsided me. That's what blindsided us. I am asking you right now, as it were, to leave the village. All the things you wanna say, all the things you feel should be said, all the things you wanna see happen, I want you to let go and take His hand and say, God, I'd rather see right than be right. <laughs> I'd rather see right then try and prove I'm right. So I take your hand and I leave the conversation. I leave the negative narrative. I leave the pain. My life is too valuable to stay stuck any longer in this place. And as God takes your hand, He's gonna ask you, what do you see? And I want you in this moment to answer honestly. He can take it. A lot of people can't take it, but God can take it because He already knows what you see. I see hurt, I see pain, I see it's not fair. I feel betrayed, I feel let down, I feel panic, I feel stress, I feel anxiety. God's like, I, I, I want you to answer honestly. And then what I'm gonna ask God to do as you've answered honestly is begin that first touch. begin that healing process. And in this moment, I just want you, if that is you and you're saying, God, I don't want to see this way anymore, just lift your hands. It's just a sign of surrender, that's all it is. Just like that man had to take Jesus' hand. It's like, God, I, I'm taking your hand in this moment. I am trusting you in this moment. For some of you, it's about your family, your marriage, it's an individual situation for others, but He's not gonna do surgery if your hands are not raised because He's not like that. God will not force Himself on you. So your hands actually do matter right now. You want your marriage to stay the same? That's fine, keep your hands down. You wanna live with the offence? You keep your hands down. But if you want God to take it from you today, if you want healing today, you're gonna have to lift your hands and that is your sign of I'm here for surgery. God, you see all these hands raised. God, you know the pain, you know the price. You know the disappointment, you know the anxiety, you know the stress. You know the tears, you know the hidden scars. And today, God, I pray, we would take it all out of our hands and put it right into yours. And God, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that You would touch every life that is responding. I pray right now, even in this moment, that healing would begin, that tears would flow, that forgiveness would open up, that lives would look to You instead of around them. God, I pray even in this moment, there would be a sense of peace that passes understanding, a clearing of what has been foggy, a clarity of mind that's coming back and finding centre in You again. I pray that frustrations would die down and faith would rise, that, that hope would begin to live again, that courage would begin to grow again, that clarity would come back again. I pray today that there would be the same statement and said that as eyes open in a moment in the natural, that they would see clearly. I pray today that there would be every decision made that needs to be made to not enter the negative narrative, not go back to the village anymore. That God, You are calling us further, that You are calling us higher. And I pray today for the boldness and the healing to take place. And in this moment with hands raised, I'm just gonna ask God to do what only God can do. 
And I'm just gonna take a moment for us to worship. And I want you to use this worship song to refocus yourself right now, to look to Him, the one that brings you healing, the one that is your helper. And I want you in this moment to do a transaction with God. Let it go. Stop thinking about what has gone be behind you and start moving into what's ahead of you. 3D vision right now. See the person that hurt you as someone that you've forgiven. See the future as a path that He is paving for you. And right now, we're gonna sing this over our lives together. But make it your prayer today. God, I look to you. Come on, let's sing this. 